All right, guys, what's up? I want to make a quick video talking about spinner baits and chatter baits and when I use them, what colors to use, um, different sizes, and uh, how I rig them because there's a bunch of different stuff that goes on and it can be kind of confusing. So, first, I'll start with the chatter bait. Um, I love the chatter bait because it covers a ton of water, puts out a lot of vibration. You can really feel it with your rod. Uh, I can toss this pretty much anywhere, it's pretty weedless. It's got this blade in front of it and that'll help deflect off a of cover and stuff like that. But it's still got an open hook, so you gotta be mindful of that. I really like throwing a chatterbait around grass. Um, I love just a straight reel in, or a straight reel in with like a pop or something like that. Or you can even yo-yo it like a jig or a worm on the bottom. Um, that gets a lot of bites. Um, there's a couple modifications I like to do to all of them before I get into the sizes and colors. And one of them is, there's usually a rubber, a rubber band going around the skirt. <coughs> Over time, with how many fish you catch and with the sun and the heat, this rubber band will eventually break apart and you'll lose your skirt. So one of the first things I like to do when I get out of the package is put a little zip tie on it and cut the tag end as close as I can do it. And I'll put the square part of it on top so it won't catch on, won't catch any grass on the bottom. Um, another thing I'll do is sometimes I'll cut the skirt. Um, you can see I left this one kind of long because the front of it kind of is uh, flaring out, but sometimes I'll cut the back of the skirt to the bend of the hook, and that will just eliminate short strikes and allow your trailer to work um, even better because it'll allow the water to flow around the bait and it'll allow it to hit the boot toe. And speaking of trailers, there's a couple trailers that I like to put on here. Um, this is a Zoom uh, Baby Swimming Fluke. Um, it's a boot tail. I love throwing a swim bait. Some people put craws on theirs. It'll cause more lift if you put a craw bait on there. Um, but I love a uh, boot style swim bait. Um, this is a shorter one. I'll throw something. This is like three and a half inches. I've got a six cents divine swim bait, 3.8. I'll put that on there or I'll put a 4.3 inch Kytec on there. Um, and you wanna make sure you match it to the color of the bait that you're throwing. Um, there's a couple different colors that I like to throw. This is a green and white one. This will imitate like pretty much anything. Sometimes I don't know if I'm fishing around bluegills or shad or crappie or whatever. I don't know what's down there. So this is my go-to one where I don't really know what's in the water if I'm fishing a new lake or a new pond. There's another one, straight green, green pumpkin for when you know you're around bluegill and stuff like that. Got white for when you're around bait fish, you know it's shad. And then I've got one that's uh, white and chartreuse. And this is kind of the same thing as the white one, but this is for a little more dirty water. This chartreuse really pops out in the stained water and will help you get more bites. There's a couple different types of ones. Um, there's the Z-Man makes the best chatter baits there is, there are. Um, I throw the Jackhammer. There's the original one that catches tons of fish. Um, there, That's available in pretty much every sporting goods store is the Z-Man original chatter bait. And they've got a bunch of different colors in them. Um, I'll throw it in three eighths, half ounce, sometimes a uh, quarter, and even sometimes like if I'm fishing really deep, I'll even throw it in three quarter. But for most of your applications, three eighths and half is what you really want to do. Um, I talked about fishing around grass. It does get hung up a little bit in wood. So this is one where I really just cover grass with it. It could be shoreline grass or it could be big, uh, expansive flats of grass. Another bait that I like to do use is a spinner bait. Um, I pretty much almost 100% of the time I'll be throwing one with two willow leaf blades on it. <laughs> Same thing I'll trim the skirt a little bit. Um, I'll put a zip tie on the skirt just to make sure it doesn't rip. Um, there's a couple different brands. This is a Picasso. I've got a War Eagle and then I've got a Eco Pro Tungsten. And these are the same size as quarter Half ounce, three quarter, just depends on what you're fishing, um, where you're fishing. But um, these are these are a little more weedless, so you can throw these around wood. You can still throw it around grass, but these are just a little bit better when you're fishing around wood. Um, then the chatterbait just won't get hung up as much. <laughs> Honestly, I don't throw the spinnerbait as much as I should. I only throw it two times the year. Um, when there's the shad spawn and in the fall time of the year when the bait really bunches up you can see balls of shad on the surface they're flicking and when you can literally just see them with your eyes 
and you have, uh, sometimes you can cast a bait out and you'll have bait fish following it, that's when I opt to throw the spinner bait. Because you've pretty much just got three bait fish looking things on here. You've got the eye, you've got both willow leaf blades. It really mimics a school bait fish really well. Um, there's a couple things you can do. Um, you can also rig it with the swim bait. Uh, I use that as a trailer sometimes, and sometimes I don't even use it with the trailer. What you always want to do is make sure you get the most fish in the boat is by using a trailer hook. You can see this, it's got a big eye on it, so it'll go over, over the end of the hook. And um, sometimes they'll come with a little plastic guard on it um, to allow it to stay on there. But first thing you wanna do is take that off. Um, you do not wanna use that because sometimes you'll put it on with the plastic guard on and you'll twitch your rod and your hook will stay out to the side. And that'll really snag you up when you're fishing around brush and wood and stuff like that. So what you really want to do is keep it free. So I take that plastic guard off and I'll use this O-ring. Same O-ring that you can use for your Senkos. I'll thread the, thread the trailer hook on. I'll put the O-ring on once. Turn it around. Twist it once. Oops. What the heck? Twist it once and then I'll stick it back over the point of the hook. This will prevent it. This will prevent your trailer hook from coming undone all the way, and it'll still allow it to be super free. So I could hit something, my spin rate can roll over it, and my hook will still stay free, and it'll help hook more fish. Um, same size as a chatterbait, um, but uh, spin rate I really only use a chartreuse and a white, a chartreuse and white or a white spin rate. Um, yeah, so those are the times and those are the different uh, types of spinner baits and chatter baits that I use. If you have any questions, you can comment on below and I'll be trying to be trying to answer them. Um, both both the spinner bait and the chatter bait, I'll be throwing on like a seven two to seven foot four rod, uh, medium heavy, so I can really feel it and be able to uh, pop the rod free if I get some grass on it, um, or if I get hung up or something, I want to come over it. And I'll be throwing this with like. Uh, 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>